Welcome to the Caribbean Property Investing Podcast, where we share real-life experiences for successful Caribbean property entrepreneurs. Learn about their successes, challenges, and strategies to help you create your plan for financial freedom. Now let's get started. I love my community. It teaches you the importance of being together even for difficult times. Business owners doing their best to make it through. Fishermen and farmers working hard to put food on our tables. Nurses caring for the sick shows me who we are made of. People who care. I guess it's about growing together. To ruminate, to create your ultimate living space. And at Courts, you'll find what you need. Choose from our wide range of furniture, electronics, and accessories to complete your space. We're here and ready to assist. Give us a call to place your order. Shop online at shopcourts.com or visit us in store. So ruminate at Courts, bringing value home. Welcome to episode 34 of the Caribbean Property Investing Podcast. It's been almost four long months since our last episode. You know, we apologize for that, uh, but a lot has been happening in the background. Working on some projects, which we're gonna be sharing uh, the details of a little later. But more importantly, we try to spend some time trying to uh, improve the quality of the sound. We do recognize that the most important part of the podcast is obviously the content. Uh, but I think the sound needed, you know, a little upgrade and, you know, we have these headphones and this big mic and hopefully, hopefully uh, our listeners uh, appreciate, can appreciate the difference, you know, and you let us know. Today, like every other podcast, you know, I'm excited about our next guest. Our next guest is uh, renowned across the Caribbean in the entertainment uh, circles. I'm not gonna to give too much details about it, but the story is an amazing story. I've known him for quite some time and uh, he claims to be shy, but we're so happy that we're able to have him on the podcast with us today. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, listeners all over the Caribbean, all over the di- in the diaspora of the world, please join me in welcome- welcoming Courtney Cutty Louis. Courtney, welcome to the podcast. Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> <laughs> it took some time getting you here. But it took some time getting here, but we're happy to have you. Um, why don't you tell the, the audience, our listeners, a little bit about yourself? Who, who, who is Courtney Cutty Louis? First of all, I'm happy to be here. The pleasure is mine. Um, Courtney Louis. Who is Courtney Louis? I was born and raised in La Pansy, Cassius, St. Lucia. I attended the Canon Laurie Anglican Primary School, then moved on to St. Mary's College. Music has always been my passion. So growing up, I was surrounded by music, hence my love for it. Um, in the music industry, I've won several hats. I could say I've done it all <laughs> from DJ to artist to producer in my earlier days. But I was always writing, and songwriting is still one of my main parts of my career today. I've managed several artists. I'm also a booking agent. And at some point in my life, I've also been a promoter. And now I'm also the owner of a record label. Um, Going back in 2011, I established Stratosphere Music. This label is responsible for so many of your favorite productions, locally, regionally, internationally. You know, the energy god representing for my friend Cotty from Dutch production. It's Tranquilo, it's Mucho Mucho. Some of you guys are there, no, no weapon, weapon at all. Come on, turn up, load, dust, me can't say, Cotty. Jesus. Boom, yeah, you know this is Chris Martin. Smart in here. I'm mean, gonna big up the wall of St. Lotion. You know it got everything. Dutch Productions, Curtis, are you responsible for everything? You are the real man. You know the thing set already. Chris Martin and Dawson to the police. Curtis, when it comes to producing, productions, you're governing. You control Chris Martin voice. 
the whole of St. Lucia for know that. See me? So I'm security, I'm a real friend, yeah, I'm a real friend. Bad man, I try to stop you. Don't mind them, Curti, I'm a real friend, yeah, I'm a real friend. Don't wait till you're gone. Be yourself, Curti, be smart. Well, this is me, the man, the king of the dance hall, and I'm here to just send respect to my producer, Courtney. Know worry yourself, yeah? Big up Dutch Productions. Good, Zaga. That's a man, I'm me. Well, you have some little junkie, tell St. Lucia, they're my attend. Big there's a tiki, St. Lucia, got it, please, I tell. Them not to no country, and they say they're my attend. Bunk them, turn them on, they perform me, they're not there. Little, they don't know that good, they're not them, they're not there. Boom! St. Lucia. St. Lucia, it's crucial, one love, yeah? She's the Colombian. Two years after that, I got signed to Believe Music, the largest distributor of independent music in the world. Um, that's a little background. I, I, I mean, take us back. Like, at, like how, how soon, how early in your life uh, did you recognize that your, your love for writing kind of can, can can kind of be merged with, with music at what point like like did you have a moment when they say you know like in form one form two form five or before that that you know what this is something i really love and i really want to do it and how did how how, how did it happen up to last week i was giving somebody the story where i had to choose between music and art so let me let let me let something out of the bag that many people don't know professionally i could you see the you see this picture in the background professionally i could do exactly that i could literally draw you handsome and you would come out it would be an like a perfect replica so i was caught between art and music and i chose music because i could not do both and that's in St. Mary's College when I was in secondary school. And and for, for listeners so, outside of St. Lucia who may not know about St. Mary's College, it's an all boys uh, secondary school and primar which primarily focuses on academics. Uh, the most we had uh, was, uh, we had art and an art troupe. Uh, music didn't come, well, certainly when, 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 when I graduated in 1990, I don't recall it being music. Any music we had was, was only choir. So I was in the choir and, and singing Calypso while, while, you know, in your year, in your era, your five years, probably they introduced music. So, so tell us about um, your career. You know, there's one thing you didn't tell the audience, that you're also a performer. <laughs> yeah. So, so like, as I said earlier, from DJ, it started with me wanting to DJ. So I actually used to travel as far as Barbados to buy music, to make sure I was always on top of the game. I always had the latest mixes, the latest songs. And from DJing, the first time I held the microphone was, you know, like being a selector, hyping up, hyping up my set. And from there I would pen, this is where I actually developed the love for writing. I would write out my favorite songs at the time. At the time, I was a huge fan of Bounty Killer. So I would literally sit down and write Bounty Killer songs, word for word. Because back then, karaoke wasn't a big thing as it is now. So that was my form of karaoke. And I would sing it over and, until I studied like the structure of the song. So I would see, OK, it has an intro. It has a chorus, a verse, etc. From that point, I started to pen my own songs. And yeah, eventually I, I hit the big stage. <laughs> and, and, tell us, and tell us some of the, the artists you would have worked with, even before those that you managed, but those you would have worked with in your career. Well, to launch, I, I cannot not mention Ninja Dan because that was the first soca song. That's what got me into the soca game. My first production with Ninja Dan, a song called Karate. At the time, it was different. It wasn't like the fast calypso, I would call it, which was trending at the time. It was different. So it was hard making the transition. It got a lot of criticism, but um, that's the first song I could say that 
put me in the game. And fast forward then, let me just mention a few. Um, locally, um, I have my part to play in a lot of the careers that will launch from um, locally, Cupid. Um, you have DJs like DJ Iowa, who was also not a performer. Um, I was the first to actually introduce Iowa singing on a song. Um, I've worked with several current Soka Monarchs. I myself have numerous Soka Monarch titles under my belt. If I go regionally to Baby Killer, who's now Mr. Killer, to Tall Pre, if I go to um, Trinidad from Marshall Mont Montano to Destra Garcia to Bungie Garland to Iowa George to KMC, if I go a little further to Jamaica, less like Beanie Man, Cecile, Christopher Martin, Jack Yo. I have a big catalog, so it's hard to mention some and not mention all. So that's just a few to mention. I think we'd get into trouble if we didn't mention perhaps the the, the most uh, famous uh, Saint Lucian, most acclaimed Saint Lucian uh, soca performer. Uh, warm to them. I mean that that he is well, he is the the standard for Saint Lucia, is he not? Well, and he's still up to what in twenty twenty two. Um, we even recently signed over, so Ricky T is still, Chateau Spam Music is still home to Ricky T, so yeah. Cannot mention Chateau Spam Music, cannot mention Ricky T. Yeah. My, my, what, I'm, what I'm thinking of now is, as a, a, a producer, typically in terms of, of revenue and income, it's not a regular nine to five. And specifically in, in, in this part of the Caribbean, a lot of your work is done during the carnival season, which probably starts now. It used to be it used to be just in July, but now the good thing because you have regional carnivals, the carnival season can start as early as well, Trinidad is in January. So Trinidad Carnival probably starts in December. Um what's it like uh in terms of, of 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 a nine to five versus this type of job job and your ability to now start thinking of okay how do you how do you get your regular income and and try to live somewhat like a somewhat of a uh, stable stable life compared to other people who work on normal nine to five or eight to four thirty what's that like okay so i don't think this is the forum for this but let me let something else out of the bag um what would you say if I told you that soca music, carnival music is not the key revenue earners? And what if I go further and say some of the songs that actually contribute to more of my revenue are not really even known in the carnival circuit? So my point in saying that is um, if you're getting into this game, especially in 2022. The most important thing is learning the business. And I mentioned a word a while ago, catalog. Your catalog have a lot to do with it. So having, 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 having heard that, how does, how, how, how does a, a normal performer producer, can, can they actually survive and get, get regular income outside of the typical uh, seasonality of it without a, a record deal? And how easy it is to get a record deal or difficult? Definitely. Um, as a matter of fact, um, again, I, <laughs> that's not the forum for this, but again, how could I put it? You cannot be two places at the same time. It's something I, I, I mean, I had to have been through it and experienced it to learn. Um, but if we only chasing carnival, it kind of, we kind of miss out on what's happening in the rest of the world. For example, there are several producers, artists, music creators clocking <laughs> major revenue, some, some seven digits, and you never heard of them. And you will never hear them. They are not on any chat. They're not chatting or anything. It's a big world. And, and believe it or not, music sells every, everywhere, every day. Every day you have like 
at least 10 million songs being released every single day. And, and what is, what, how, how does a, a typical uh, songwriter musician in the Caribbean actually get to benefit from revenue outside of the key performing periods? Well, you need to understand, like, like any other business, you need to uh, understand your target, your target audience and your market as well. Um, if you're selling something, you need to know what you're selling and to who you're selling it. So you basically, you start by knowing and understanding your market and your map. And by doing that, you know exactly how, what, what, what to do how to tackle it Let, let's break it down for for our audience um mm -hmm. what needs to happen so i'm a performer um uh, carnival is coming i'm preparing my songs um I, I obviously have to have some sort of business to register my company so i register a business so let's say it's sing out loud incorporated is my business mm -hmm. um i write a song uh i registered the song with the copyright association so in St. Lucia is Echo, mm -hmm. I think in the Caribbean is Cot, C-O-T-T, -T, correct? That's what Trinidad, Jamaica, um, they, they're Barbados, they're different ones. Trin Cot is just Trinidad. There's okay, Sassem, so, so, which so, different territories, yeah. They're different so I send, I, send my song, I send my song to them and I register. Obviously, mm -hmm. I must also be a member, so I have to join those associations as well, right? Correct. Okay, so now I've joined the association. Uh, this association my song is registered so what happens mm -hmm. because it plays on radio and i and i know a couple of a couple of people have asked me before trying to understand this business so explain to us what you know about the streaming and how you earn from streaming and explain to to our audience what you know about um airplay uh radio and and the radio stations actually pay the copyright associations or the institutions and and the money gets back to the artists just explain the two those two revenue streams for us, so pe people can get better, a better understanding of them. Okay, so you let's let's tackle what you hit on there, like the copyright. You register your song. How it's supposed to work is you're supposed to wherever your music plays, you get paid. So the copyright agency every quarter, or some of them, most of them do it quarterly. Um, some of them. <laughs> every year annually um they now supposed to pay you your royalties during that time based on the so based on the log so they get logs from radio stations they get logs from promoters they based on the logs they see they get that data and you get paid that's what's supposed to happen um streaming now is another ball game with streaming, um, independent artists have the freedom to sign up with. There are so many distributors available that anybody could sign up to. Um, some of them you pay, so you, you pay, you sign up, and they would in turn distribute your music to all the popular outlets, etc. Or if you get a direct deal to a bigger distribution network or label, um basically they do the same so the for for those who are not privy to be signed to a bigger label or bigger distributor they could just go on to sites like tunecore dishrocade and submit their songs and they get their royalties from their streams from these outlets which is one of the major revenue earners for music creators now streaming kind of couple years back you needed to depend on physical sales your cds selling shipping your cds physical sales but with streaming now it changed the game where your music play you get paid your music is on spotify you get paid your music is on youtube you get paid um what a lot of people need to be aware of though um to generate any major income from any of these outlets even from both from the copyright you need to have music out there that you, you need to have you need to be doing the numbers for example some people might say hey i have a million views on youtube that is no money 
a small money. It's just which a which bring me which brings me to my next question. And I know that the the, mm -hmm. the algorithm for online algorithms are, are complex uh, and and. But can you give a sense a sense of what the metric is like? So, for example, a thousand streams, two cents. Like, do you, can you give our audience any idea of what kind of money versus the amount of play? Believe it or not, it's not set in stone. There are different means where you you get guided by inform. Okay, let, for in, for instance, I might have a billion streams. And Drake might have a billion streams. We will not get paid the same <laughs> figure. Got you. Got you. A lot of people not. What I'm giving you there is very, very few know or understand what I just said to you there. I would have a billion streams. Drake will have a billion streams. And we will not be. He will be paid <laughs> a different figure. Much more than what I would be paid, for example. Now with streaming, for example, a mil I just said a million, a million views, that's no money. But what if you had a million views a hundred times? So for artists, it's kind of more difficult for artists, but for labels who, for, for example, let me give you a, a, a little, mathematics here. for example i'm a label i may have four or five artists under my umbrella and artist number one releases two songs artist number two releases three etc artist number four releases 12 songs artist number five releases so artist number one is monitoring his free songs so to him it's free songs so it's like hey okay i got a million views here this one is not doing too bad okay total i have three million views artist number two who released five or whatever songs he's monitoring his his business artist number three watching his business but the label now <laughs> it's everybody at once so it's artist number one so artist number one what he's watching plus what artist number two is watching plus what artist number three is so when artist number one might have three million views artist number two might have four million views the label is watching sitting down on seven million views so if for example a million views equals three three hundred us right so artist number one is looking at 300 us times three 900 us yeah. but if i label have a, a set of artists with all these views so the label would always make more money than the artist because the label takes up their commission before they pay the artist correct that's the other thing it's, it's based on what deal you have now okay let me let me put you on a little more. Caribbean artists. Caribbean. How many Caribbean artists are signed to a label? And I mean a label, the label. Give me percentage. Give us percentage. This percentage. What's your estimate? It's it's based on the deal. Okay, some labels, some labels take as much as 90 plus percent of everything. Wow. But it typically advances money to the artist, recently, right? I recently, an artist I deal with, uh, uh, you know the artist, you worked with the artist back in the day, in another, ter in another territory. He's, he's, he's really knocking the mainstream right now. And I was able to, because I'm actually part of the team, I was able to see a contract. So a label did approach him, a major label, and he respectfully turned down the offer because it was in some cases they were claiming a hundred percent so this okay. is why you see more international artists sometimes like okay mick mill for example he's he up to it's either last week or week before he made a comment saying that for the first time in his career he's gonna make 10 million on his album because he never made money on his album because he's no longer with 
the label who he was affiliated with before. So he's a free individual right now. So most of these internationals, and a lot of people don't understand that. Sometimes they, they see an artist, hey, this artist is charging half a million dollars to perform. Hey, this artist, that half a million have to go so many different ways. It's not the artist money. It's, it's, it's a machine driving the artist. It's, not, it's no longer about just the artist. I, I don't want to lose our, our, our listeners here, but uh, it was important for us to establish a kind of the, the business uh, of the industry. And, and I think it's important before we, we pivot um, to the next part of the, of, the, of the episode, we need to, to, to state clearly um, from your perspective, what you've achieved in getting a, a deal with a, an international uh, distribution house. Again, it's important for you to, to estimate that what percentage of artists you think or producers in the Caribbean have such an arrangement? Less than 10%, to be, you reckon? To be honest, I only know of one, one other artist in the Caribbean with such a deal or arrangement. And so, I could go further to say I know quite a few artists from popular to upcoming so put it this way i know a lot of people business and i personally only know of one other person with such an so arrangement and it's not so a two, similar so, i got sorry, a label so, and deal. Uh, sorry, so I, just, uh, I don't lose my my channel for yeah. so two things two things you said um one um, it's rare. And, and two, just give, you know, a quick summary of how you were able to get that international deal. So you've been in the business for how long now? 30, 30 years? Sorry. I, I, I like to say over 20 years. <laughs> okay, over 20 years. years. How long ago you got that deal? 2013. Let me, let me, let me, I want to stress on the fact, which is very important. These arrangements and even your career and where you go, it totally is not based or dependent on your talent. It's just being the right place at the right time and probably meeting the right people. It, it, it's talent, even for in, in this game, talent, talent is important, but it's, it's not what could and would take you to the next level. So it's so, the power of networking. It's the power of networking. So for me, um, I was, let's go back to St. Lucia Jazz Festival. That was years ago. That was 2000, in the 2000s, I met, I met someone from Universal Records, which is the biggest label in the world. And that person and I became friends, close friends, up to a day like today. And that person, I mean, in again, networking, we were lying So, I mean, I'm driving, I'm driving this person around. We, you know, we're going spot to spot. I'm, I'm obviously going to play my music. <laughs> so that person would hear my music everywhere we go, you know, and like, hey, you're so talented. Hey, you're so talented. And that person became my publisher. So that person was the one pushing buttons, you know. Um, another thing, Akon said something the other day in an interview, and he's so correct. He said something, not in the exact words, but like, don't let anybody tell you, hey, you're great, or your music, hey, the man say, hey, you suck. All of us, we <laughs> suck. <laughs> so, the man said, getting a record deal or getting on the inside is almost like winning the lottery. And right. Rihanna come to mind because I kind of, I, I have key inside info at, on Rihanna's story. I, I actually have family, blood family involved in, so mentioning blood family, being around the right people, having the right people, in your network 
has a lot to do with where you go. So it wasn't about my music was the best or anything. So it was, I had the opportunity to get the A from the right person for my music. So that person could not get me a deal with Universal at, at the time. Obviously not Universal is interested in Drake, Jay-Z, the likes, etc. cetera. These are the artists signed to Universal. And she, yes, a she, she always, she always used to tell me, hey, I'm going to get you something. I'm going to get you something. In 2011, when I established Shatter's Fair Music, she came to me with this contract from the label I'm signed to right now. And she gave me the contract. Hey, I did not need to read anything. At the time, I, would, I, I trust her. And to me, at, at that point in my career, hey, what, what do I have to lose? And she gave me the contract. I signed the contract. And the day before she left St. Lucia, she said, you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. It is not the best deal. I'm going to go back and renegotiate. Do not hold on. I promise I'm going to get you something. And that was 2011. 2012 passed. Hey, that I that went here and <laughs> that was never on my mind. And she came to St. Lucia for jazz. She would normally come for jazz 2013. And she said, Hey, I got I got it now. Now you could sign. It was the, so it took her 2011, 2012, 20, it took that long to get the right terms and condition. And up to a day like today. Um, this person and I, she's still a part of my team. She's still another thing, Anselm. Relationships are golden. Never burn bridges, especially bridges that you may need to cross later on in life. So that is how I got the inside. Um, I would tell anybody close enough who know the story that for me, it's not my talent, it's not luck. I call it blessings. I'm a God-fearing person and I call it blessing. My whole journey, I call it blessings. So 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 so, so, Kati, so 20 plus years you're in the business. It took you 20 plus years um to get to get recognized, you know, and 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 for you to get those relationships established, for you to get that type of deal. And we also established that that deal is very, very rare, less than five percent. Uh, but you also said something which I want to, to just mention before we kind of springboard into, into the next uh, segment. So you were saying it, it's, it's not about talent. In this case, it's about volume. It's about volume and consistency. Tell us about mm -hmm. your, your property journey. Um, when did you decide to start looking for your own place? When did you decide to start uh, thinking, you know what, I no longer want to rent. Um, or what was your, what was your thinking that that led you there? And, and did and did you start looking before you got the deal? How long have you been looking for property? Anselm, like what I just said, for me, my whole journey is blessings, and I'm somebody I would I would like to see that I sometimes feel guided by a higher being, a higher force. So, you know, so at, I'm somebody I would not have something, I would be blank and then just wake up and I'd be like, hey. So for me, it was exactly that. Waking up one day like, hey, um, I'm tired of renting. I need, I need to have my own, my own home. So I started, it was when? It was not just before COVID just before COVID. Because everything, again, going back to what I said, just the timing, just before COVID, I started house shopping. So I reached out to various real estate agents and companies, and it didn't take too long. I located something to my liking in Monier. Monier, Monier is a quarter of grocery, right? Yeah, what, what were you looking for? What, what, what was your search criteria? Right. So I was looking for 
a home, but also a home where I would have space to accommodate tenants so with additional income and I could accommodate because I have artists who frequent my gates so I could accommodate artists if they come in I have a little studio space and I could still have some tenants that was my aim so I located a seven bedroom six bathroom um, property on three levels um, and at the time, I was not thinking about building or anything of the sorts. I wanted something that was readily available because I've heard stories about building from so many people. Even presently right now, I have a very close friend who recently built her property and huh, I, I have to say thank God. <laughs> So I went the full mile, I approached my bank, I did everything that was necessary, and my loan was approved for this property that I was- I have eyeing. a question. I have a question. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you approached the bank for that six bedroom, five bath house, what was some of the questions that they asked you, especially as it relates to your income? Uh, did you have any challenges uh, because you weren't in a, a full-time job? Boy. Good point, but again, I want to stress on the fact that I put that first. I put God first. Everything I do is governed by the power of, put it this way, my story is not the usual story. I could, I could openly say that my challenges and, and the, the stories I've heard, I went through this process with none of that. I mean, there were challenges, which we will get to later on, but um, I had, what did they ask me? Hey, this is what you want? Okay, all right. There, there were no issues um, in the beginning with the bank. There were no issues. What did, what did you have to show as a, a source, of, source of income? Because you have the, now, the, the, the deal, the royalties? This is another, this is something I've actually been in discussions with key people from various banking institutions. Um, one of the questions they actually asked me was, how can we set up something to make it more attractive for people in my line of work? Because I'm one of the few who would and who actually qualify. Because there's, <laughs> there's n believe it, I kid you not, there's nothing in place at the banking institutions for people in my trade i would say so there people with seasonal seasonal people with seasonal income yep. yep so so without without the the ability to show regular income from from your royalty payments it would have virtually so, okay, been, so been almost let me, impossible let me give you more insight on my story for me i'm no stranger to the bank that i've been dealing with i've been with the establishment for <laughs> so long. So they have been seeing all my, they, they have records of my transactions and my issue, etc. So as much as they don't understand how it really works, they have history. Now, this is something, again, I would tell, or I would want other creatives like myself to be aware of, and I have been preaching it to many, build a relationship with a bank from early, from early, because the harsh reality, a lot of people in my line of work, they are bad with money. Money management, I think it's part of being a creative. <laughs> It's, a, it's something that plagues a lot of creatives, money management. From you'd, you'd be surprised. Not, not, not everything we see is what we see. So build a relationship. I could go further and tell you something, and it is a fact. 90, maybe more than 90 percent of creatives in St. Lucia do not even qualify for a loan as the smallest loan. They do not even qualify. 
So how mm. so according without without being in the one percent and the two percent to have a deal, what do they do? You said first of all, build a relationship. So so so, so, really, so what else do they do? For example, it's something I I tell all the people I work with. As soon as you get a check, bank it. Even though you take it right out immediately from the machine, bank it. Put it in the bank. Cash. Avoid cash transaction. If you, you know, let the bank see you working. If them get a little checking account, you know, do if it's groceries, if it's gas, you put it in your vehicle. Use <laughs> Let the bank bill so start, start somewhere. Get a little credit card, even though it's for uh, uh, the, the, the smallest amount. At least let them see, hey, you 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 have some sort of you you could be responsible. You could manage your finances because at the end of the day, I think what the bank want to see and uh, ensure is that hey, you could handle whatever you willing to take on who so taught you that really... you know that over the years who taught you that <laughs> you want me to tell you the truth i learned a lot of that truth? from answer matter <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's let's move so so Courtney, you told us about what you were looking for because you are you are you are a producer a, a lot of artists and and i guess aspiring musicians would come to your place so you wanted a place where you can you can house them if you needed to, but also a place for a studio. What happened with the six bedroom bedroom uh, five bath house? What happened next? So so something. I mean, I reached. It was like how how could I put it? It was like a bittersweet situation for me. I I got the loan approved and I was all I I I was on top of the world and. You know what made me more happy? My mom. My mom was so happy because she always been telling me, hey, I want to see you have your own home. I want Before I die, I want to see you have your own home. Um, so for me, it, it was a huge accomplishment, not even for myself. I felt good knowing that, hey, I did this for mama, right? But something wasn't feeling right or sitting right. And I reached out to a personal friend um close friend and out of he was the one the lone the lone ranger who told me no no don't do that no nah, don't do that shut that down blah 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 blah. even mommy get vexed with me <laughs> my mom was like no but like and the loan got approved in the heights of covid so everybody was like, yeah, you don't know what's going to happen or whether, blah, blah, blah. You don't know if you'll get another loan again or take it and run and blah, 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 blah. But um, let's just say my friend, after I was not feeling, it, I felt incomplete. The, the, con, the, the icing on the cake was for me was the advice from my friend. And what he said, I'm somebody, I'm open to criticism. I'm open to guidance. I don't know everything especially those who've been there after me i like to i don't want to make the same mistakes others have made i like to learn from their mistakes so common sense it made sense so <laughs> while everybody else was against my decision i went back to the bank and i told them nah this does not what, what, sit what, well what were some of the key issues though what were some of the key reasons you, you decided to stop that deal the and what did you look location. for the location okay so okay based simple mathematics which made sense for me my repayment to the bank so put it this way and the property was currently at the time housing tenants so i would have that income but i would also have to use that income and I would still have to, for the next 20 plus years, find a way and means to pay the bank. Um, what about renovation? Because if it's six bedroom, did you have to, did you plan to subdivide? Was, what do you yeah, plan to do? It was looking good, but eventually it was, it was 13 years old. So all that I took into consideration at some point down the line, I would have to 
go um, do um, renovations again. Um, and most importantly, it wasn't something that, it wasn't my vision. It was somebody else's vision 14 years ago that I'm just adjusting. And for me, my first property, I would like to have input in it. And believe it or not, I never pursued the other route because again, I've heard so many stories, but talking to my friend and he made it sound so much easier. And I mean, it was somebody I trust. So what I went for it. So you told the bank, you told the bank to pause your loan after it's very rare. As you said, it's very challenging for creatives. I didn't tell them pause. I told them I don't want it. <laughs> I told it's, them I'm it's... looking for something else. So I, will, I am willing to go through the entire process again with you all. But this is, I told them, this is my vision. And again, the bank, kudos to the bank. They, I had no issues. I had no issues. They told me what to do. They said, well, okay, um, since we are ready, even going forward, a lot of the things that I thought I would have had to do all over again, I didn't because it was not too long after. And all this, I, that's another thing. I wasted no time. All this happened in, in, in the matter of the same year. So what happened next? So, so you said to the bank, after you got the loan approved, stop the loan, you don't want it. What did you do next? What did you look for next? What, what happened? I went land hunting because now I'm programmed to build my home. So apart from a land hunting, I started to, with assistance from other, another thing, Anselm, you need to have good people around you. That is very important in any, in any venture you need to have good people around so i got assistance with getting my designs i got assistance with locating the the, the right contractor etc so i went land hunting i located a piece of land at um hilltop avenue bellevue Kazaba, overlooking cap estate overlooking matnik the magnificent so you, have, you have sea view in the north uh, yes Yes, wow. yes. And not just that, I was able to grab enough land to build the same property twice. So I what, what, do, you mean, what do you mean by that? What do you I mean got 12,000 square feet of land in a fairly not sloping, nice, nice. Like, like everybody I brought to see it at the time were like, we, how did you get that? How did I get it? By the for people, people for people out there looking for land, what what, what advice you have for, for them for land hunting specifically? What did you do you think that helped you get that land so quickly? Again, I have no control over the time or again I, I would say blessings because everything happened like everything just fell in place. So I reached out to the same um, real estate people and one of them another actually at the time my neighbor at the time who is a real estate person was able to say hey I got this piece of land up there blah 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 and I she brought me to the location and I fell in love with it on the spot it felt right I'm somebody with vibes it felt it felt right that feeling I was feeling before it was no longer there that's creative speak. It feels, it has to feel a certain way. Correct. So Okay, so now you found the land. What's your thinking now? Because you, you remember you walked away from a six bedroom, five bathroom house. So what's your thinking mm -hmm. now? What you're going to build? What what's the Correct. design thought in your mind? What's your what's your strategy Correct. there? So again, um I had to get the design with my input, with advice and guidance from close persons. Um, so when I was satisfied with something to my liking, um, I had to go to the process of, um, what's it, DCA approval? Development Control Authority, planning, yes. Yeah, so I went through, I mean, you know the process, the different processes. I went through the processes that one needs to go through. Um, 
I have so I, I locate the land, I have my design. I I don't only have my design, I now have because from that point, from approval, etc., I now have a contractor, so I have the cost of what I want to build. And what I want to build is something modern. That's another important. I want something where at the end of the day, so let's go back to the, the original property I was sourcing. I would, with, with the additional income from the tenants, I would still have to go in my pocket every month and pay more than 75% of what the repayment that, that's the that's the old house. So how do you change that Correct. with this new design? What did you do so differently? With this, new, with this new project prospect, it's a game changer because now I could actually generate revenue and have potential to <laughs> instead of money coming out of my pocket every month, I could now have money coming into my pocket. So basically also, the property is myself. The property is well, for itself because you, with the design, you build something where the first thing I said was the location. So the location, you, you, you close to everything. You close to all the amenities, the view and tied in with the modern concept. So everything about the house is modern everything so what would normally I, do, I don't want to go into exact figures but what would normally cost or not normally but or should i can i say what majority of the other places would sell for one dollar i could sell it for three dollars because of your your modern design and and the location so in, in terms of the the number of rooms because you left one single compound six rooms six bedrooms what 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 kind of layout did you now have with the new building? I you know? now have five rooms total, five rooms, four bathrooms, and I could divide the five rooms into two units, so I could comfortably fit myself in one unit, and the other unit could comfortably take care of my mortgage, and I still have potential to build two other units and if i so choose or if i can decide to just build a whole exact property again i can do that because there's there's so it the the, the new choice of project there's a big room for expansion sky is the limit there's so much i could do and at the end of the day most importantly going down the line um let's just say i want to sell a property i have we, i have let's just say i would have a lot less stress than right because because of, of the, the nature of it so question but but just a point of uh guidance for our off, audience. To, let me just add one thing not to cut you off yeah before the property the property was probably at 95 percent and three people approached me to buy it. <laughs> but you didn't sell? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> what were, uh, I was going to make, the point I was going to make earlier on is uh, typically when you said you could do the same uh, building on the lot, typically you can do two separate dwelling houses unless you subdivide the land into two lots. What you probably have to do is do the same building, but it must be connected in some way or the other. But what about your studio? What about your studio? Great, great question. Great question. And it's something, it's something a lot of people close to me did not grasp. We're in 2022. Um, I could sit right here, right where I am right now. You, have you seen DJ Khaled's studio? I've seen videos, yeah. Okay, I could sit right here right now and there's nothing that can be done in a major studio in terms of recording or pre or, 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 or pre-production that I cannot do sitting right here. 
Oh, because so of software. Me, so for me right now, the gospel truth is I'm secure in my units come first. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 you could use that space for another unit, not the studio anymore. And do everything on your yes. on your computer. Okay, put it put it this way, Anselm. I have options. I have a lot more options. Opposed to the original arrangement I was looking into. So so we so. we're starting to kind of wind down, but before before we, we, we move on to the last segment, what, what challenges would you say that you experienced during the entire build process? What are some of the difficult things for you? Well, all this happened um, during COVID. So material prices went went up. Um, and obviously there were delays in, in shipments and you know, there were a lot of delays in terms of challenges compared to some other stories I had. I have been hearing. Um, <laughs> mine was like a walk in the park. Um, to overcome the challenges that were another thing I want to add, um, without having the right people in your, without having the right contractor. So for, for me, my experience with the contractor I worked with, um, no names, no mention, no names. Of course, you, got you. Of course. So, okay. Um, I never felt at no point in time, I felt like I was alone. So I want to big up Darren Charles from Structure Inc. And every, Darren was there every step of the way. He worked with me every step of the way. I have zero complaints, zero. Um, I also want to thank the person who recommended Darren and um, big up yourself and got me in contact with Darren. So for me, I, I can say I had one of the better experiences. And this is one of the main or most important things you should consider anybody out there planning to build or, or planning anything similar. You need to know who you're working with. That is key, that is instrumental um can i let me give you an example for instance at some point um the windows i was supposed to get originally there was a delay and it's still again i call it blessings i originally had windows planned part of my plan right and the, because of the material and COVID, I could not get it on time. It would have probably take six months. So I had to spend more money. So I got, I ended up getting more, better windows. And Darren basically, instead of charging me additional money, he just said, you know what, let's go through, let's go through um, the paper, your paperwork and let's see what else we could downgrade on or what else let's you know let like he, he was willing to work with me at no point okay i can say at no point whatever figure it, so this happened before covid so take into consideration i got my quote before covid covid hit prices went up by more than double in some cases right and at no point in time, I had to pay anything additional on my original code. How, how much of the design and the materials, um, how much change happened there in that selection? Even that, again, I have to big up the, big up the contractor because the original design, for example, um, there were places where they had no doors. There are doors now. There are places where they had certain designs that were altered or so. So there were changes again at no additional cost. For example, um, the property I the property has shower text on the exterior. 
that was not the original plan. I mean, I'm, am I am I upset about it? Hell no. <laughs> so it, it it was the, my challenges. I would say it, it might not be everybody's situation. I could speak for myself. It were minimal. Mm -hmm. so and and, and for people listening, people listening now, um, um, Courtney, without perhaps having the benefit of of the relationship with their contractor as, as, as you did with yours. What are some of the things that they can do apart from, I guess, downgrading, changing, you know, what, what advice you have for them as it relates to the price increase after the contract has been set, contract price has been set. Most importantly, you need to be realistic with your goals and be realistic with your pocket. Most importantly and get somebody who's willing to work with you. They are out there. They are out there. Get somebody. And another thing, don't be a stranger to those you know, to those who are around you, to those who you love and trust. You know, sometimes you don't want people in your business, but nothing wrong with getting advice from those who have done it before you. Speak to people. Hear their stories, hear their experience, learn from their mistakes. What yeah? what uh, uh, what's it like being a landlord? What's that like? Oh, what, what's that? What has that experience been like for you? Okay, to other people who have not started this journey yet, I want ask yourself this. You want to be a tenant to someone else or the bank for the next how many years? Or you want to own your own home and be the landlord? Ask yourself this. For me, this is, this is, this is probably the most important move that I've made side from my personal life because when I, when I say my personal life my my seeds for me are my greatest accomplishments but um it was a for me a life-changing move very important because had i went the other way it's something i would have to live with for <laughs> so many years so for me for me, the feeling, the, the I, uh, it's just a feeling of gratitude. All right, and and as we as we close, um, how does your mom feel now that you you you've completed the house? Hello. Okay, you know what you should have asked the. She's not in the country, <laughs> but um, when she is in the country, the question you asked before, you should ask her that. How does it feel to be a landlord? Because it's mommy that in everything. <laughs> the, the rest of the land, mommy build out, mommy plant her whole garden there. I tell her about mommy, hey, I'm putting a pool there. Hey, that's mommy plant her whole garden. And at, even that, on that aspect, I've had pumpkin soup, I've had watermelon I, from, my, from my garden, <laughs> from my backyard. I've been able to, I've had enough pumpkin to give away. <laughs> so and, and and Courtney, as we close, what do you what do you say to people watching this? You know, who have eight to four, 30, 95 jobs, uh, from someone who didn't have a regular income in the creative industry, uh, typically with all these challenges. What do you say to somebody watching now who've been thinking about doing it and haven't taken action as yet? What would you like to say to them? Do not think twice. I know um, we've, we've been raised or we've been guided to, you know, go to school, get an education, work, get married, build our home, but think properly, think this through, think twice. Again, I go back to what I said a while ago, you want to be a tenant for for the next 20 plus years, or you want to be the landlord. So think thoroughly and make, make the decision your future self will find. 
I like that. I like that. I think I think that's the perfect end. Make the decision that your future self will thank you for. All right, Courtney. So you've been listening to another edition of the Caribbean Property Investing Podcast. Every time we do this, the stories that you 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 get is so heartwarming. You know, it really really motivates you, and we want people to share share that share those stories. From the first podcast to the 34th, this one will be, you know, like the, the, the page, subscribe to it, share it, ask questions, send us your feedback. We want to continue doing this. If you have a friend with, 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 with something you think that they can share, that can benefit our community across the Caribbean and the diaspora and the rest of the world, reach out to us on Instagram at Caribbean Property Investing or at CaribbeanPropertyInvesting.com. Our email is CaribbeanPropertyInvesting at gmail.com. So until next time, remember, we all need somewhere to live, so you might as well own yours. Until next time. I love my community. It teaches you the importance of being together even for difficult times. Business owners doing their best to make it through. Fishermen and farmers working hard to put food on our tables. Nurses caring for the sick shows me who we are made of. People who care. I guess it's about growing together. To ruminate, to create your ultimate living space. And at Courts, you'll find what you need. Choose from our wide range of furniture, electronics, and accessories to complete your space. We're here and ready to assist. Give us a call to place your order. Shop online at shopcourts.com or visit us in store. So ruminate at Courts, bringing value home. Congratulations and thank you for tuning in to the Caribbean's first property investing podcast. We want to help Caribbean people create wealth and achieve financial freedom through property investing. Our show provides general advice based on personal experiences and is for educational purposes only. For more information, resources, and past episodes, visit us at CaribbeanPropertyInvesting.com. Remember to click the subscribe button so you never miss a show. Let's go.